of revelation and um, and of direction and of counsel. I'm going to, for the first time, be presenting to you the things that the Lord has revealed to me concerning the year 2025. And by the grace of God, like I've always said, the prophetic and its revelations for the church, it's an advantage of knowledge. The prophetic and its revelations for the New Testament Church of Christ is to serve as an advantage of divine knowledge. And um, when we receive these prophetic counsels and these prophetic revelations, our spiritual understanding helps us to be able to make good warfare with whatever the Lord has revealed to us. Yeah, by the grace of God, the things that the Lord revealed to us for this year, you know, to a large portion has been fulfilled. Over 70% of what we have in the 70 to 80% of what we have in the prophecy for 2024 has been fulfilled by the grace of God and the signs that we are giving for nations they have come to pass. And just as I told you by the Spirit of the Lord in 2022, around this period for 2023, the Lord told us about how the year was going to go, what was going to characterize the year, you know, the whole contentions and the, you know, back and forth between people and it's going to be a year of, you know, people dragging each other, people and all those stuff, those who follow us already know. And then the signs that were given for different nations, Kenya, for India, and, and all that, by the grace of God, those things were performed. And um, God healed a lot of us. God healed a lot of people. And um, there was a lot of restoration. And there will be a lot of restoration because the year is not over. Um, and by the grace of God, it's around this period which is very significant you know it's around this period those who have followed our ministry for long it's around this period we always bring to you the prophetic word of the lord for the next year and why does this prophetic word comes around um, october and november for us you know it's strategic because october happens to most of the times be the new year of the of the people of israel you know so um it's a very strategic period and um number two you know we are in a very very vast generation and um we don't want the word of god to be um to be associated with any man we don't want the glory to be given to a man you see so it's better we begin to prepare for the calendar year by knowing divine the divine revelations of the spiritual year are we together so let's go straight into the word of the lord now for those who have followed us for long i've already told you about 2025 and i told you that 2025 is going to be the year of dominion and i told you that there's going to be an abrupt shift from the year of healing straight into the year of dominion and I told you that what's going to characterize 2025 was going to be encroachment of nations. Nations are going to begin to advance other nations. It's going to be big. It's going to be the year of dominion. There's going to be military movements. There's going to be nations moving against nations. So you may call it wars and rumors of war, but according to what the Lord showed me, and I've told you already, it's going to be the year of dominion. We can already see the signs. We can already see the signs. You know, to know the incoming year, you, you begin to see the signs from the outgoing year. And uh, we are praying, but it seems as though uh, we are already seeing serious, serious, you know, cold war already happening, you know. And as usual, it's centered around the nation of Israel and, and around, you know, the Middle East. And the truth is that, like I've told you before, Israel is a shofar. You, Israel is a clock. If you are prophetic and you know how to read the Middle East, not just Israel, but the Middle East itself, if you know how to read it, you are going to be, you are going to discover a lot of things that will play 
that will have a lot of impact on the world. So 2025 is the year of dominion. 2025 is the year of dominion. And for those who are a student of prophecy and for those who have followed us, we can already see the signs. They are glaring. They are before us. They are before our eyes. And they are already preparing us. And so we must be prepared by the grace of God. Now, I'm sharing these secrets with you because you are the church of our Lord Yeshua. And his spirit of prophecy is upon us amongst many things to give us the advantage of revelation, of knowledge. So this thing I said unto you so that those days will not come upon you suddenly, so that you will not be unaware. As believers, we are not to be caught by surprise. We have a spirit of revelation that helps us and tells us the things to come so that we are not caught by surprise. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Okay, we have uh, uh, enough people online already. So, 2024, 2025, for our ministry and for the world and for the body of Christ is going to be the year of dominions and trumpets. It is going to be the year of dominions and trumpet. Yes, it started raining, so it's, it's all prophetic. As soon as we started, it started raining. It's going to be the year of dominion and trumpet. Hope you can all hear me. Hope you can hear me. 2025 is going to be the year of dominions and trumpets. And the Lord gave me a scripture to describe 2025 and that is what he normally does he'll give a, a particular scripture and with that scripture he he would describe the year for me now the scripture he gave to me was joel chapter 2 verse 3 with joel chapter 2 verse 3 you are going to get an insight into 2025 and what does joel chapter 2 verse 3 says he says, a fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burned. Now this is for those who have a need. A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea and nothing shall escape them you want to know 2025 look at Joel chapter 2 verse 3 meditate on it and understand it the lord said this scripture is what embodies or describes next year a fire burned before them and behind them a flame burned a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. A desolate wilderness. Nothing a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. Now if you've studied the scripture you know that the Bible was speaking of the low-cost army. And we see that it's going to be a year of fire in front, devouring, flame behind, burning. Fire in front, devouring, flame behind, burning. It's going to be Garden of Eden in front of us. A desolate wilderness behind us. May the Lord give you understanding. So, hear the word of the law. It's a year of taking, seizing, wanting, and encroaching. It's a double-edged year. It will present opportunities for some, and it will cause others to lose all their heart to the ones who take. Remember, a fire burned before them, a fire devoured before them, a flame behind them. The Lord now went on to tell me 
The year is for the government and the lawmakers. The year is for the fighters and the warriors. The year is for the kings and their host. And the Lord showed me movements of nations from their lands into the lands of others. Now, last year I had already told you these things, that from next year we are going to begin to see encroachment. We are going to begin to see movement, you know. What I'm talking about is not what you hear Israel is entering here. No, we are going to see nations band together and they are going to begin to move into nations. We are going to see nations advance other nations with intentions of war. It's going to be clear as day and it's going to begin properly from next year. And remember I told you, I said the season of next year is going to last for three and a half years. So 2025 season is going to cover 2025 calendar year, 2026 calendar, it's going to cover 2026 calendar year, sorry, 2027 calendar year, 2028 calendar year. The season of 2025, so it's going to be dominion through to 2028. Three and a half years of, of wars and rumors of war. 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 And praise be to God, I've already been telling you these things two years ago. Since two years ago, I've already been preparing your heart that this what is going to happen in 2025 is going to be the year of dominion. Are we together? So I repeat again, the year is going to the year is for the governments and the lawmakers, the year is for the fighters and warriors, the year is for the kings and their host. And nations is going to move from their land into the land of others the year will swallow the week it's not a season for the week and to be weak that's what lord told me the year is going to swallow the week it's not a season for the week and to be weak and then i wrote this the lord showed me everyone being on high alert with their weapons in hand the Lord showed me watchmen looking at the borders and preparing for invasion. The world will be on, uh, on high alert because powerful nations will make advances into other lands. And then, as the Lord would always do, he would also give me certain signs for the coming year. Now, those signs are just very notable events through the year that will come to pass. Now, this notable event doesn't need to be palatable. If you look at the two instances where Agabus prophesied in scriptures, it was not something necessarily good. So in that instance, prophecy just acted as, number one, an advantage of knowledge for the one who is hearing the prophecy. The famine that Agabus prophesied about was an advantage of knowledge for the church who heard and watched for the prophecy. And also when, Paul, when Agabus told Paul that he was going to be in prison, it was to prepare the heart of Paul for what he was going to experience. So please, in the scriptures, there's nothing like prof, prophet of doom. If not, even Jesus would be a prophet of doom. Because when he told us about the future, what he was saying about the future was not something palatable. He didn't say in the future everyone is going to be multi-millionaires and everyone is going to be big and blessed. No, no, no. He told us what was going to happen, the dangers that awaited us to alert us and to give us knowledge. You know, we live in a very sensual generation and when people hear prophecies, they become offended. They become offended at the prophets and they begin to blame the prophet and feel that, oh, why are you always seeing bad things? No. It's what the Lord shows us as the sign to come. That is what we're going to say. And also, we should not expect to hear good in a wicked and adulterous generation. There is good for the church, but we should not expect to hear good in a wicked and adulterous generation. May God give us understanding. So, these are the signs that the Lord showed me. And if the Lord shows me more, I'm going to update you. However... I felt the prompting to share this with you now. The, the first thing I saw next year is Portugal. And this vision was very unique. I saw the whole nation of Portugal. I saw them gathered in a football field. And in that football field, in that stadium, 
I saw them crying there, and it was like a whole nation weeping in a football field, in a, in a, in a stadium. And then the vision was taken away. And so I wrote it down. The nation of Portugal weeping in a stadium, and it was a national sorrow. So now that's the first sign I saw. We are going to keep Portugal in prayer. Let's keep Portugal for those who are intercessors among us. But that's the first sign I saw. I saw that sometime next year, I saw Portugal in a nation. And the whole nation was sorrowing. Now, I didn't see why they were sorrowing, but I saw them gathered in a stadium, you see. And then they were, you know, crying, and it was, it was something national, you see. So, we, we, we are praying. We are praying. Now, this prophecy did not come with any condition whatsoever. It's just a vision that came, and I saw it. And um, it's written that if it comes with a condition, then maybe more details will be given. However, these are just signs. So let's keep it in prayers, and you know, let's watch to see how we're together. Now, number two, when the Lord gave me this vision, I just had to write it. And I said, I'm just going to say the word of the Lord. But trust me, for those who have followed our, our, our prophecies for many years and you follow the signs of our prophecies, you know these things are inspired by the Lord. So it doesn't follow anything trending. However, I saw that Iran, I saw them receiving help. It was as though they were receiving help. And this help will come at the expense of three nations. You know, as though I saw the nation of Iran, there were there's so much support coming. However, it, it, this help would come at the expense of three nations. So there's going to be something that's going to happen. Now, I don't know within what season, but the Lord says it's going to be a sign for 2025 season. Um, the, the, the nation Iran, there's going to be this help coming to them, but at the expense of three nations. It's very clear, at the expense of three nations. Now, so number three, the Lord showed me a country called Equatoria Guinea, and in this vision, the, the third sign the Lord showed me was that in this vision, I saw something that looked like a red mountain, you see. And I saw the name of the nation. It was Equatorial Guinea, and it was like a red mountain, and then smokes, you know, smokes were coming out of this red mountain. And then I saw, you know, rural people, you know, seeking shelter, you see. So, and the Lord was prompting us to pray for the nation. I could sense a prompting to just pray for the people so that they will not be surprised. Now, if I was to, you know, give it a meaning from my own perspective, I was okay, this looks like something volcanic. But, you know, it's weird from the physical place because I've never ever heard of any volcanic. I don't even know whether there are volcanoes there or I've heard of any volcanic um, eruption there, but let's pray for them. You know, there were just these clouds that look like volcanic clouds, and but the nation was clear. It was it, it was Equatorial Guinea. You know, so the first sign is Portugal. The Lord showed me Portugal and the whole nation weeping in a stadium, and it was national sorrow. Number two, the Lord showed me Iran, and I saw them being hurt so much, but at the expense of three nations altogether, and then Equatorial Guinea, and then number four, Zambia. I saw Zambia, I saw as though this, there, were, there was this promotion happening for Zambia. Maybe this, this is good. This promotion happening for Zambia. And I saw them leading a coalition, the, the nation Zambia. I saw them leading this coalition in this vision. And there was this blessing of a lot of opportunity for them. And the Lord told me, he said, the nation of Zambia is going to sing a new song. And this was the fourth sign, the Lord said, we said, the nation of Zambia is going to sing a new song. All right. So if you're in Zambia, pray for the word of the Lord because the Lord is going to use your nation as a sign. Pray for the word of the Lord. And um, the fifth vision I saw was for the nation of Egypt. The fifth vision I saw, the fifth sign I saw. And it was a very, very strange vision. In fact, it was today I saw this vision. And I saw as though Egypt, one of their national treasures, this was like a, you, do you, know how, you know how the pyramids are to Egypt, and you know how the Sphinx are to Egypt. It was, as, it was a national treasure, and it was destroyed in this vision. 
It was a national treasure, but it was destroyed in this vision. And the Lord said, a site rich in historical significance will be swallowed up. That's what he told me in this vision. A site, a, a site rich in his, with historical significant, significance will be swallowed up. Now, that's the first, that's the fifth sign he gave to me. And then number six, he showed me Africa. And I began to, I moved in this vision and I saw, you know, fellowships. And, you know, I've been talking about house fellowships, house fellowship, but it seems as though in 2025, these things that have been prophesied about now began to come to pass. You see, I saw as though there were these fellowships, it's houses I moved into, but I saw Africans pray. A lot of prayer arising from, from Africa. And the Lord now told me something. He said that much prayers will be needed from the month of May. So it seems as though, it seems as though there is going to be a move of God from Africa for the world. You know, and he told me that from the month of May, there's going to be a move of God. This May next year, there's going to be a move of God from Africa that's going to be around intercession but this time is going to be like a, a home and house fellowship intercession however it's going to help the world so he said in that vision told me he said much prayers will be needed from the month of may and then the vision the vision ceased and the lord has shown me israel you know we cannot we cannot speak without also speaking about the nature of the Lord, because I personally was asking the Lord, Lord, look at what's happening around Israel, look at what's happening around the Middle East. What what do you have to say about this? Now, what we are seeing today in Israel is not strange. These things have been prophesied about by the prophets of Israel a lot of years ago, hundreds and thousands of years ago. So there is nothing new happening in Israel. There's nothing new happening in Israel. These things has already been revealed. But look at what the Lord now told me. He said, They will advance a march against and into Israel, and the hand of his greatest ally will be weak against that move. And the Lord now told me that vision. He said, But God will help Israel, and an enemy will turn into their saving grace. He now said, The rejected stone will become their saving grace. So he said that there's going to be a march advance against and into israel and he told me that their greatest allies will not be able to stop it in fact the way the vision came if i was to give it an interpretation before you all brethren i i i sensed as though at some point you know now we know that america is one of israel's really strong allies and we know why you know it's not because of any religious sentiment. We we know why America is strongly behind Israel, however, a part of America now. But I saw as though, if I was to interpret it from my own perspective, it, it felt as though America was betraying Israel. That's the best way I, could, I, I can put it. You know, like, like America was betraying Israel. You see, then at, at, at some point, it, the betrayer was revealed and may, may, may God give us understanding. However, the Lord says this. He said, God will help them, and an enemy will turn into their, their saving grace, and the rejected stones will become their saving grace. So I would say this way, the way I sensed it, when this word was coming, God is going to help Israel through Christians, through the same Christians that, you know, Israel seems to have casted aside the same Jesus Israel seems to have casted aside. I sense as though God is going to help Israel using the rejected stone. God is going to help Israel. Now that's the interpretation I'm getting from this enemy. Turn now I don't he just say an enemy is going to be turned into their saving grace, and he then said the rejected stone. And we know that Christ is the rejected stone, which is prophesied to be chief of the corner. So there's going to be, when allies fail, and within this season, when these things begin to come to pass, the church of God, the church of God, the nation of Christ in this world, 
the nation of Christ, which is the church of God in this world, is going to be used to help Israel. So, these are the seven signs I received. And then, the Lord now moved me into a vision where I saw the church. Now, it's like this is for the church of Christ because every prophetic insight should include prophetic directions for the church of Christ. I was moved into a vision and I saw the church of Christ praying and fasting. And then I saw as though traveling slowed down and then a spiritual awakening intensified. And then the Lord now screamed to me, say, 2025 for the church shall be a year of visions and sight. So if you're a Christian, and we should say a big amen to this, if you're a Christian, 2025 for the body of Christ is going to be a year of visions and sight. Visions and sight. Visions and sight. Listen, prophetic visions and sight are not for form. In fact, they, they are not for displaying churches. They, it's, it's an impartation for us to lead the government, to lead the world. And I, I, I sense when this word was coming, I sense this, this rod and staff anointing where the church is going to begin to be very relevant in leadership of nations because of the visions and sight of the Lord upon them. So there is this very strong increase coming from God and intensifying of vision and sight. And the way he put it, there's going to be a spirit of prayer and fasting. A spirit from 2025 for the next three and a half years to, is going to be a spirit of prayer and fasting. Prayer, not just prayer. Prayer and fasting. And the Lord is going to be baptizing us into visions and sight. It, it came clearly. He it said it's going to be the year of visions and sight for the church. And the Lord began to show me dreams and dreamers everywhere. And the Spirit of the Lord was helping many to find grace in troubled times and in troubling times. You see, so when you begin to see an increase in visions and sight from 2025, 2026, don't be surprised. That's what the Lord is doing with the church. And then there's going to be an increase from the Lord in the appetite of fasting i saw people fasting and praying people fasting and praying and they were being brought swept by the lord into visions and sight and because of this the lord the church began to cancel many nations because we are stepping into troubling times the year of dominion for the next three and a half years is going to be troubling troubling times it's going to be troubling times so the prophet and the prophetic ministry and you know the ministry of the holy spirit within the church is going to be needed it's going to be needed it's going to be needed it's going to be needed listen the prophetic ministry is going to be dragged out of the mud and the sons of Issachar are going to begin to lead in the seasons of war whenever you see the seasons of war guess what you find there's men and women of understanding Men and women of understanding are raised in the seasons of war. Whenever there is warfare, whenever kings begin to go to war, watch out. Men and women of understanding are about to rise. So for the church of God, what he told me clearly, he said it's going to be a season of prayer and fasting and it's going to pour upon them. The spirit is a spirit of vision. And sight, visions and sight. I will say a big amen. A, 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 a big amen to this. A big amen to this. So, these are the things that I've received. Obviously, in the new year, 1st of January, as, as a custom is, we're also going to share with you. But watch this. You are going to see that everyone who here is going to see part and prophesy part. So, what I've shown you is the part that God has shown me. That doesn't mean that God may not show someone else another part of what is going to be happening in 2025. So don't feel that, oh, all of 2025 is going to be gloomy, it's going to be um, despair. No, no, no. Prophecies is an advantage of knowledge. And that the earlier the church begins to understand that these things are shown to prophets for their advantage, the better it is for us as the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, like I've been telling you since last two years and last year, the year of dominion is upon us. And if you follow the news, you are going to see that the signs of the things that have been spoken is already coming to play. 
You know, the last time all these things happened, I came and told you that, no, the World War III is not yet. And because we cannot have World War III and we've not entered into the year of dominion. And like I told you, the year of dominion is going to last for three and a half years. So 2026 is still going to be 2025 season. The season that began in 2025 or that begins in 2025 and that is that has begun is going to move into 2026, move into 2027, move into 2028. It's going to be 28 and a half, so three and a half years, um, before we now begin to announce a new season if Yehoshua tarries to come. So please don't despise any other prophesying. Don't feel that because Prophet Joel has said this, it means that if someone comes and says there's going to be light in 2025, it means that what that person is saying is unspiritual or what that person is saying is kind of no. We see in part and we prophesy in part. We see in part and we prophesy in part. We prophesy from, from where God has kept us. For some of you, these things I'm saying is not news to you because you've already seen it in the spirit and they're part of the things that God has already told you for the year 2025. For some, God will only show them visions as it has to do with their locality. For others, God will show them vision as it has to do with their nation. For others, God will show them visions as it has to do with seasons. For others, God will show them visions as it has to, has to do with the world. Are we together? So that is how it works. So don't feel that what I'm saying is the only thing that we are going to see throughout next year. All right. However, when the Lord, by his grace, the kind of prophetic ministry has given me, it will give you how the year is going to move. All right. So if you look at what I'm the signs I'm giving you, you are going to see that that's how the whole year is going to move. Irrespective of what, you know, other parts is going to show. So what we are going to see in 2025 is dominion. It's best described by dominion. And if you want to understand the year 2025, meditate on Joel chapter 2 verse 3. It said this scripture is what is going to describe the year 2025. A fire devoured before them a flame behind them, the garden of Eden before them, a desolate land behind them. And it's going to be a year of high alert. High alert. After this live broadcast, the manuscript of this thing I've just said will be posted on my Facebook page so that you can look at it and pray about it. However, before January, first we would have compiled you know a greater portion of the prophetic word but this is just how the year is going so pray for portugal pray for equatorial guinea pray for zambia pray, pray for all these nations that god has given diverse signs you see pray for all these nations and then especially pray for the church pray that you are part of the people that God is going to, you know, deem worthy of releasing this strength, this rod and stuff, this and this spirit of vision and revelation, this spirit of vision and sight, vision and sight, vision and sight. If you've been in the a, a prophet in the training seasons, get ready for 2025. It's your season. It's actually the season of announcement. And what I saw is not prophetic anointing for show or for church. It's actually prophetic anointing for government. So we're going to see prophetic anointings for government. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Prophetic anointings to lead government, to lead nations, to reveal secrets of enemy. So we're, that's that's what we're going to see. So there's, there's a promotion happening for the church. There's a promotion. So don't be distracted by the happenings. Focus on the promotion God is giving the church from these happenings and we all are going to be blessed in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. So this is what the Lord says and this is what we are going to see come to pass. So um, Happy New Year for those who are joining us from Israel and we pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for the Middle East. We pray for the Middle East. We pray for the Middle East. It seems as though this, this thing is, con you know, it has to play out in the end of time. But we pray that God helps the Middle East. We pray for Israel. We pray for every nation involved in the Middle East. Because whether we like it or not, families are dying. People are losing their life. People are losing their life to this. 
you know this may be news for us but it's real and also africans pray pray guard your land guard your land um, that thing i told you about encroachment it's africa is not going to be spared so guard your lands guard your lands be sensitive guard your lands we, so that we will not be used to fight another man's war guard your lands and be sensitive i would explain more by the grace of the lord as the lord helps us and if jesus starts to come um first of january we are going to compile all that the lord will allow us release on the public space and then we are going to share it with you all in Yehoshua's name. I will together. So God bless you all. Uh, we have over 9,400 people on Facebook and over close to 400 people on YouTube. So share the broadcast. Um, those on YouTube, go to the Facebook. We're also going to post um, the manuscript on YouTube in the community space. So um, maybe 10 minutes after now or 5 minutes after now, the admins would have uploaded this manuscript so that you can look at it and pray with it and for those who are prophets you compare note and then you compare with what god is telling you so that it can also encourage you to speak the word of the lord boldly whatever god tells you say it boldly in the name of jesus so god bless you all this is where we end this broadcast shalom shalom the lord bless you all in yeshua's name bye for now hello thank you for watching Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos. God bless you.